This whole first floor of this house had water up to this level. For coastal communities, rising seas are part of daily life. We thought we had more time. So much erosion has taken place that we can now see the roots of this tree. The changes are subtle from one year to the next, but residents have seen them accumulate, and the latest data confirm they're accelerating. Hurricane Irma, for instance, this entire area was flooded severely. Compounding the growing impact of storms, sea level rise is an immediate threat to coastal communities and economies and the coastal ecosystems we depend on. I've seen water right here where this truck is, not as high up on the dock. The southeast coast is defined by a million acre corridor of salt marsh, a mosaic of barrier islands, spartina grass, and pluff mud. It provides vital habitat for multi-billion dollar fisheries, sequesters carbon faster than tropical rainforest, and absorbs flood water and wave energy to reduce the impacts of storm surge. The salt marsh is a living frontline defense against rising seas. But the front line is a vulnerable position. These PVC poles right there below that group of oyster shells mark what the marsh shoreline was then. And you can see how much we've lost. Since 2008, sea level rise and this area has been on the order of seven millimeters per year, which doesn't seem that much. But when that goes across a flat landscape, it just kind of builds up day after day, season after season. And the net result is, you know, 20 feet of shoreline erosion in this short period of time. This is a marsh that is drowning. And the problem here is this marsh can only migrate to about there. It has nowhere to go except for this basin. So as it drowns in here, it's, it's, it's going to be the end of the salt marsh. It's just really sad. Wherever salt marsh is hemmed in by natural topography or human infrastructure, its vegetation drowns in place, triggering a spiral of wetland loss. Without vegetation, the marsh surface doesn't continue to accrete. And if it's not going up with sea level, then it will never get vegetation back again. Without vegetation, wave energy is undiminished, intensifying erosion, which in turn spells the loss of even more crucial elevation. The more marsh we lose, the faster we stand to lose what remains. So you're seeing areas where the vegetation is thinning and will ultimately transition to open mud flat and eventually open water. Where tides ebb and flow daily and islands shift their sands over decades, one habitat flows into the next and boundaries are non-existent. On this ever-changing coastline, change itself is survival. As seas steadily rise, coastal wetlands are migrating, shifting inland, upslope, and upstream out here beyond me, you can see the Spartina grass. This is the true marsh out here. And as we're getting closer and closer and coming up this really subtle incline, we're noticing a pretty stark change in our vegetation. In the future, with anticipated changes in sea level, you would anticipate that this would gradually become your Spartina grasses right here. So as it becomes more frequent, these guys will march backwards, the Spartina grass will march inwards, and this will transition into salt marsh. Wherever salt marsh still connects to undeveloped uplands and freshwater rivers, the open space creates resilience to rising seas. Preserving these marsh migration corridors is critical for maintaining the services that coastal ecosystems provide. We do know that upland habitats are readily converting to tidal marsh through marsh migration. We can see ghost forests forming where forests die off due to the influence of salt water. But that process is what will allow tidal marshes to survive into the next century. 
And if we want to think about habitat retention of tidal marshes, these very valuable ecosystems into the future, then policies that can facilitate that process of marsh migration are increasingly important. As dynamic coastal ecosystems blur their boundaries to survive, coastal communities are following suit, reconnecting landscapes and coordinating efforts across our own boundaries to adapt. There's a lot at stake here. If we don't get it right, we stand to lose the very foundation of our existence here at the edge of the sea.